part three of the SR rebuild. If you didn't watch the last video, as usual, there's a card, click on it. We're putting on the cylinder head today, so let's get to it. All right, so we have these two dials right here, and basically they go here and here. I'll put arrows. There's a little gap. We're gonna use pliers and close those up, squeeze them, put them in, let go of the pliers, and then we can put the ARP head studs in and the head gasket in the head. Alright, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, if you're using ARP head studs and trying to install your head, you're gonna struggle, especially if you're by yourself. Um, right here you can see I'm trying to get the guide in, which was hard in itself, holding up the head. Uh, the guides do get caught. Uh, right here I actually caught the guide and the timing chain, and this is after I already dropped the timing chain. So uh, yeah, a lot of things can happen when you're doing this. ARP recommends you install the studs first, so that's why they're in already and not after I put the head on. Either way, uh, this is the second time I've done it. It's hard each time, but eventually I do get it.
こうして人外たちは秀吉を守る生産の戦いを続いて人Time for a little bit of lift through talk. On the right here is what, in theory, would be an example of a bad lifter, and on the left, we have a good lifter. So, when you take these out of the car, the first thing you're going to want to do is squeeze each and every one. So, on the right, we'd have our, in theory, bad lifter, and you can see that I can compress it. On the left hand, I cannot do it. So, right now, I'm going to bleed all of the lifters. The first thing you need is an Allen key. I don't know the size, I'm sorry. I'm very disorganized when it comes to Allen keys. But you're gonna want something that fits in pretty good. You see that fits in pretty nice. So, what this is gonna do, the Allen key is gonna go in, kind of falls in place or locks in place. When that happens, it's gonna open up a seal, and that seal is gonna allow you to actually compress the lifter. It's my second time trying this, but you should be able to find. There it is. So, I don't know if you heard it, but it just clicked into place. And that's gonna allow you to compress it. Okay, it's still squeezing just a bit. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna keep bleeding it. All right, now I cannot move it at all. This one's done. I'm gonna put it to the side, and I'm gonna repeat that process for each uh, each lifter. All right, and that's how you bleed your lifters. It's a very easy process, uh, not hard at all. I think the hardest part of doing this was trying to find a container to put this oil in. All right, so these are the rockers with the shims and they're in the exact order that they're gonna lift up and go right into the engine. We're gonna lift up the shims, put them in, put the rockers on top, and then we can put the cams in. Doesn't matter. Oh.
but you're the one still tied to the past, Spike. Between both mating marks, there's 20 rollers. So if I had a mating mark on each dowel, from there, I would count 20 rollers in between. Obviously, you can see that it's slightly off, but I'm still gonna count. And if I have 20 rollers in between, since it's still on the bottom crankshaft sprocket, I'll be fine as long as the amount of links in between these two marks is the same. Right there they're like little dimples you initially line the higher dot up with the dimple right there i'm gonna put an arrow when you push this in it should slide into place and that second lower dot should line up with that indent Alright, so we're on to the last thing, and that's going to be the timing chain tensioner. You have this pin on the top right here. You're going to need to push that down, and you're going to have to push it all the way in. That's it for part three. Before you guys go, go below and hit subscribe, turn on post notifications, that way you guys don't miss part four. If you learned something, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any tips, and I'll see you guys in the next one.